Welcome to our Cisco DevNet video series on Cloud Security API. In today's episode, we will be diving into Secure Access APIs, Authentication Best Practices content together with, with Yaron Kaspi, API Product Manager at Cisco. Hi, Yaron. Hi, Alexei. Thanks for having me. And as you mentioned, uh, in, on a previous stream, we dealt with basically just getting started, making your first API requests. And here, we're going to take that one step forward, one step towards actually building you know, either your program or your script or whatever it is that you're putting together uh, to use our APIs, but to do it in a way that will be both efficient and uh, ultimately yeah, serve the needs that you have and your use cases. So super quickly, in the previous stream, we created an API key. And we gave that API key all sorts of access scopes, which we selected from the groups. And as a result, we got an API key and we got an API secret. I'm going to share another screen here just for a second. We're going to look at essentially how we translated that into our very first API request. So in the terminal screen here, I'm just making a curl request to API SSC Cisco.com. And I'm going to ask for an access token using the key and the secret that we created before. And we saw this in our previous session. We saw the structure, right? Uh, here is our access, our access token, so to speak. But we also saw that it expires in 3,600 seconds. In other words, in one hour. Today's session is all about how do I deal with that one hour expiration? Because it would be very inefficient to make a request to get an access token like we just did for every single request that we make. Not only inefficient, but it also might get you rate limited because we have rate limits around our token uh, authentication, right? Getting access tokens. So what we're going to look at today is how do we deal with this? How do we take it from one request to multiple requests? A good example for multiple requests could be if you're paginating. Let's say you have multiple sets of data, multiple pages of data rather, right? And you need to get page one and then page two and then page three or offset one, offset two, offset three. There's no need, no reason to get an access token for each one. You only need to get an access token before the previous one expires or even for that matter, after it expires. No harm, no foul. OK, so let me share my browser again. We'll go back to it. All right. And what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go into the cloud security repository that we have underneath Cisco DevNet, OK? So underneath Cisco DevNet, there is a cloud security repo. We will share the link with you, of course. And underneath it, there are uh, the different cloud security products. There's Umbrella, CloudLock, and this session will deal with secure access. If we go into secure access, we have two folders here, one, uh, a bunch of Postman examples. These are collections and an environment for Postman. <clears throat> and the second are these samples. So we'll be adding more of these samples as we go along. But today, we'll look at uh, our Python sample. And you can see here that there are actually two different Python files here. One is for authlib, one is for requests library. OK, there are two, basically two, two options here that you can choose from depending on how you want to implement this. So if we just scroll down, the readme includes all the information that you need in order to do this, basically. right? It includes the overview of how you basically, first of all, export your environment variables. 
And then once you have exported your environment variables, which are your API key and your API secret, and we'll, we'll see how we do this in a moment, then we can go to the actual examples. I'm going to skip over the auth lib example and go right into the re Python request example. Okay, You can see that the readme breaks down the different elements, right? The initialization, creating the access token, and then refreshing the access token. This is the real goal of today's stream. It's to focus on how you do a refresh and how that is uh, basically timed so that you're, you always have a live access token, not an expired one. And here we will just look at the example that is included. But this is just an example. You could use essentially any kind of example you wanted. In this case, we're just going to be making a request to get a certain report from uh, one of the reporting endpoints, basically, okay? And it takes you through the whole phase of, again, exporting your key in secret as environment variables and running through the entire process. So without further ado, let me share another screen. We will go right into the actual example itself. All right. So basically, um, I've just copied uh, this uh, file, the file that we looked at before, the Python requests file. Um, you can do it in two ways. You can either you know, pull the file um, uh, from GitHub, or you can just click on it, view raw, and basically copy it, uh, uh, copy the contents as is. Um, in this case, I'm using uh, VS Code as my IDE. Um, nothing really special here, um, but once that I have this file inside, um, you can see that it includes the different elements, right? For example, uh, getting the access token. And you can see for the access token, we need the URL, we need the client and the secret. These are both uh, uh, brought from uh, environment variables, uh, as we saw, and uh, as we also saw, what we need to do according to the instructions in the readme is export them. So let's just go ahead, we'll export our API secret. Okay. I'm just getting that from my previous screen. And then I'm going to export my API key. Okay, great. So now that I have both of these set as my environment variables, you can see that the URL itself is pretty uh, much just as we uh, saw before when we made the standalone request for the token, right? api.ssc.cisco.com, all three, two, and token, right? Only this time, what we're doing is we're doing the get access token. And in addition to the uh, get access token, we also have an element here around refresh token. When do we refresh the token? Based upon its expiration. What is its expiration? So it gets the <clears throat> expires in payload from the first step that we saw. You saw that expires in 3,600 seconds, right? In one hour minus the clock skew in the clock skew in this case being 300 seconds, so five minutes. So five minutes before my access token expires, it's going to make a request to get a new token. That way, my requests will not fail, okay? You can set a different clock skew. You can define this differently. <clears throat> you could set it to only request a new uh, access token once the uh, previous one fails. You can do it in any way that you want. This is just one example of, of how to implement it. And then we have the actual request itself, as we saw, right? Which is basically our access token as a header, right? Authorization bearer header. And we're calling api.ssc.cisco.com reports v2. And what are we calling underneath reports? The actual endpoint is the summary endpoint 
from minus five days to now. Okay, that's all there is to it, basically. Um, we're gonna run the code now. And there we go. We get our summary and it's going to make as many API calls as it needs in order to get this, right? How many applications we have, how many domains, things like that. This is just a high level summary, just an example, okay? But the takeaway here really is um, to build in a mechanism in your code that will allow for uh, a token, getting a new access token um, every hour and not for every single request because otherwise, again, to the point, you might get either rate limited, but in any case, your code would be inefficient. That's all for now. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Jan.